Some have argued that the flight data recorder information stopped recording six seconds from the Pentagon wall. The reason they argue this is to justify the fact that the flight data recorder shows too high to hit the light poles and too high to hit the Pentagon if the trends are continued. Uh, the flight data recorder information based on the raw file decode that we did shows the latitude longitude position at this point. That's the very last point that it shows. And some argue that this is the point where all the data ends, which would explain why the aircraft shows too high. However, this positional data, data is based on what's called an inertial navigation system. The inertial navigation system is a self-contained unit on the aircraft based on accelerometers, which calculate the position of the aircraft as it flies. The accelerometers are prone to error. The uh, inertial navigation system itself are prone to errors, especially when the aircraft is doing extreme maneuvering, accelerating rapidly, and so forth. It's very possible that during the 330 degree maneuver and the rapid acceleration during this dive caused the INS system to crash at this point. So we must see if there is any other data within the flight data recorder that shows a more accurate position. As a matter of fact, there is. The CSV file that was provided to us by the National Transportation Safety Board, the original file, not the raw file, the original file that we were supposed to have that was provided to us and produced by professionals at the NTSB for public distribution through the Freedom of Information Act shows what's called DME, or Distance Measuring Equipment. It's not a self-contained unit. It's based on a ground facility and a receiver in the aircraft. And the ground facility was DCA VOR, which is a radio beacon basically on the ground. And it shows the distance from that facility at the last point at 1.5 nautical miles, or 1.5 DME, at 0937.43. The NTSB reports the impact time at 0937.45. So that's two seconds prior to impact when this was recorded. So what we need to do now is determine that position of 1.5 DME. The 1.5 DME was recorded off of DCA VOR, which is Reagan National, and here is the radio beacon, the VOR on the field that it was recorded from. We'll go out to 1.5 nautical miles roughly on the south flight path. And we'll measure the distance in feet from the impact hull to get the time based on speed. 2,695 feet it shows from the impact hull. Now remember this aircraft Based on the files that the NTSB gave us, this aircraft recorded 1.5 DME at 2 seconds from the wall. Calculating its distance based on speed, we can get the time. 781, roughly 3.5 seconds from the wall, so that's too far. However, if we look at the northern approach, We'll put this back into nautical miles. Go to 1.5 DME. Go back to feet. Two seconds represents roughly 1,600 feet. That is a lot closer. So the DME itself even reflects the northern approach. So what does this mean? It means that it's impossible that all the data stopped recording at this point. It's impossible to have recorded even northern or southern approach at 1.5 DME if all data stopped here. So now that we have established that it's impossible this aircraft stopped recording at the last latitude longitude position, we'll move on to the next argument. The next argument states that the aircraft 
stopped recording at 1.5 nautical miles. Well, we already know that the NTSB places it two seconds prior to impact. So this is too far away. However, for argument's sake, let's say that the altitude was recorded at this point, which we know it wasn't, but we'll say it is, and we'll see if it's still too high at this point. We know that the altitude at this point, based on argument's sake, is 273 feet above the ground based on the radar altimeter. The ground elevation for this point is 120 feet plus 273 equals almost 400 feet, 393. We know that the light poles and the elevation here, top of pole number one, is roughly 80 feet. So that's 313 feet. This aircraft has to descend 313 feet within this distance. Let's see how long it takes to travel this distance based on the speed. We'll go back to feet. seventeen hundred and fifty five feet divided by seven eighty one equals two point two four seconds two point two and a quarter seconds it has to drop three hundred and thirteen feet three thirteen divided by two point two five equals it's dropping it has to have a linear descent rate of 139 feet per second times 60 to get feet per minute 8,346 feet per minute descent dive which is a rapid dive to get from this position just to the top of pole number one and then level out to be level with the lawn as seen in the five frames DOD video that's impossible. So the argument that the aircraft radar altitude was recorded at 1.5 DME off of DCA VOR is pure bunk. So to sum up, the NTSB reports the time of impact at 0937.45. The NTSB shows the end of data at 0937.44 too high to hit the light poles when we adjust for the pressure altitude to the local pressure as seen in Pandora's Black Box Chapter 2 Flight of American 77 shows it directly above the highway too high to hit the light poles and if trends continue too high to hit the Pentagon keep in mind this data was provided by the NTSB they plotted it at this position they plotted the time the professionals at the NTSB produced this information. They refused to comment. Others like to make excuses of where this altitude and the data stopped. It did not stop here, we know that, because it recorded points here. If it did stop here, it's still too high to have hit pole number one and level out with the lawn as seen in the DOD five frames video. So no matter how you slice it, the flight data recorder information does not support the government story. The NTSB, the FBI, they refuse to comment. That should highly concern everybody out there, including pilots. Thank you for listening.